Hi, y'all. Good to have you here today. Uh, we miss you. We love you. We can't wait for the hours, weeks, months ahead to see you. Hopefully, not that long. But thanks for listening in. The ultimate, it just astounds me when I read the Bible, how much of actually Bible content is some way focusing toward what Christ did for us on the cross. It's amazing in, in just reading through the Old Covenant, the Old Testament, everything that they went through, and uh, but all of the sacrifices, all of the the bloodshed through animals of all kinds, all of the priesthood, all of the tabernacle, the ceremony there, every tiny little piece of that had its fulfillment in one six hour period on the cross. Uh, it's, it's amazing how important the cross by itself is to God and God's economy. Whether anybody recognizes it, whether anybody honors it, the fact that the Son of God gave his life. When he gave his blood, he gave his life. When he gave his life, that was of tremendous impact on God. All of creation was created with that in view. All of eternity will be praising the lamb that was slain. You and I have had no hope with God outside of his blood. You and I, it, our, our, our improvement, our, our betterment, our Christian conduct, our Christian thinking, our mental health, our emotional health, all of that, the doorway into those things as benefits and blessings of God was the blood itself. Nothing but the blood was the blood itself. I noticed this week that the word blood itself in the Hebrew is the word dom, D-A-M, dom. Or as it's written in Hebrew, it's dalet. And then it's the, they toss a vowel into the middle to make it pronounceable. And then mem, dalet, mem. The picture for dalet is a door, a doorway. The idea is coming and going. The mem is, turned out to be our M, is a water, a wave, waves. Uh, it can speak of any liquid, it could speak of water, it could speak of blood, it could speak of the masses of humanity are compared to waters. And so the word blood itself, dalet mem, dung, uh, it just means that there's access, there's entrance, there's movement. The door is the blood. The door is the blood. The door of the masses is the blood. I have no access to God improved by my conduct or spiritual advancement or superiority. There were two problems that I really had in the past was that I, I thought that uh, my place with God was somehow improved or hurt by my conduct. Now I'll tell you that conduct hurts us. Poor conduct can hurt us. It can damage our lives. It damages people around us. Sin is destructive. Sin tears down everything that God builds up. So I'm not minimizing uh, the destructive influence of sin in my life, but if I should think that my right conduct has earned me any credit with God, I'm misunderstanding. I'm misunderstanding uh, the way God thinks, the way God works. Uh, there is nothing but the blood of Jesus that allows me access to God. I, it's the dalet <laughs> is the blood. The blood is the doorway. It's the coming and going. The blood opens up access to God. And it's the only means of accessing God. 
not just in getting saved, but in living a life with God. The only uh, way to understand, comprehend, to, to receive the realities of God after we've come to know him through Christ is through our faith and confidence on the blood of Jesus. As soon as we become confident in God's desire to bless us, benefit us, uh, add to us, if, if we look at him in the, uh, from the view that he is a giver, but he's more inclined to give the more responsive we are, he's less inclined to give the less responsive we are, the less receptive we are, we're misunderstanding God. God has already given. He doesn't become more, he doesn't become more generous, less generous, more lavish, less lavish, depending on us. He has already poured out. He has already lavished all of the goodnesses, all of the, of the blessings through Christ Jesus. The Bible says we have received past tense. This is Ephesians chapter 1. We have received every spiritual blessing in heavenly places through Christ Jesus. You haven't received one of them. You have received all of them. Then the Bible says now that you've received them, then start receiving them. <laughs> now that they are yours, now that God has done the giving, now you start, uh, you start believing. You start, don't believe that God is going to somehow extend any more to you than he's already given. Don't, don't think that way, but think this way. That by the Spirit, I'm going to begin to enjoy, I'm going to begin to participate in, I'm going to begin to experience and, and take advantage of to the full what Christ gave me once for all when he died for me on the cross what was imputed to my account once I was born again, once I was saved. The very first instant we believed, we didn't receive then the potential that we could have at God. We received the actual uh, deposit of everything that we have in God. And, uh, but now through faith, we are, we are participating in what we already have. Why is that a big deal? Uh, because I think there are a couple kinds of Christianity. Uh, there's all kinds of Christianity. But I think we can separate the Christianity in two different compartments. Maybe three. One is thinking that we must now convince God that he can give us more, that he could be freer with us, bless us more, uh, use us more, minister through us more. Now I have proven how trustworthy I am, God. Now you can turn me loose and I'll be a prophet to the nations. You know, we can, we can have that type of thought. It's always more, 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 more. It's not enough. And so uh, I used to live that way. There's a second kind of Christianity that understands God has given us all already through Christ. That we've received every spiritual blessing, that all the promises, not most of them, all are yes in Christ Jesus. Can I confirm for you, and I, I believe this is true for me and every, every human being on the face of the earth, that in Christ Jesus, Everything is one big yes in Christ Jesus. One big yes. Universal yes to us all. You could ask God, you could just look up his way and he'll start saying yes to you. God, and he'll just go yes. It's yes in Christ Jesus. And um, so we have that in Christ. Now that being the case, there are Christians that they understand that it's a finished work, it's all been done. But it's, it's like they, uh, and I, I'm speaking for myself, I went through this time too. It's like they don't understand that that can be taken advantage of and capitalized on or left to waste. 
Uh, one of my favorite passages, I think I've mentioned this in the last few weeks, it's Second Corinthians, the last verse of chapter 5, that he who knew no sin became our sin so that we might become God's own righteousness in him. So, I mean, how do you improve on that? How do you improve on God's own righteousness? And, and that comes not through our doing, but through our believing. When we believed in Christ, we became that. Now, chapter 6, unfortunately, is separated from chapter 5, as they, they broke it into verses and chapters, but actually it's a continuing thought. And he says, because we're ambassadors of Christ, we are telling you not to waste the grace of God. And then he said that right now, and he's quoting from the Old Testament, right now, God answers those that call out to him and gives help to those. And he says, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of God's favor. And what he's saying is now that we have and know that we have, now there are those that don't know they have the righteousness of God. They think it comes and goes with their performance. They don't understand the gift of God that came by faith from God versus their own righteousness that is uh, so undependable. And so, but there are those that understand I've been made righteous. But then they don't go on to the next sentence that says, now don't waste it. Now don't waste it. And it says that today is the day of his salvation. Today is uh, of his favor. And in the first part of chapter 6 of 2 Corinthians, it says that in Christ, now that you're the righteousness, he hears you and he helps you now. So don't waste the grace. Don't waste the grace. So there are those that don't know grace. They just are, are constantly feeling like there's not enough. I need to do more. I'm not righteous enough. I'm not holy enough. I need to pray harder. I need to seek more. I need to whatever it is that I need to do to somehow get God to open up the grace door to me. I want to tell you it's been opened fully, totally, once for all. Now, there are others that accept that and believe that, but then it's kind of like they just go limp. It's like they become passive. They fall to the floor and say, well, God's done it all. He's given it all. And I want to say, I, I don't know what's going on with you, but something isn't connecting here. Because if you believe in Jesus, if you believe in the gift that he gave you, if you believe in the blood, if you believe in the oil, if you believe in the sacrifice of Christ, if you believe in the Holy Spirit that, that puts all of that into effect, if you believe in those things, then the Holy Spirit himself rises within you. The Holy Spirit, the person of the Holy Spirit who has been implanted within every believer on the face of the earth, he begins to rise up and he begins to take over your life. He begins to dominate your life by faith because you believe. And you say, well, I believe, but I just don't have any interest, any motivation, any heart, any energy, any power. And I go, I don't think so. I just, I'm sorry, I don't think so. I believe that you believe in the gift of Christ to you and that the Holy Spirit has come to you. But I'll tell you that by your ongoing daily, moment by moment, day by day, lifetime experience of believing and trusting in God and the Spirit of God that's been given to you to live out what Jesus has purchased you, then the Holy Spirit himself becomes your life, becomes my life, it's, it's like Colossians 2 says, this is not a theory. This is not an empty doctrine. This is not a philosophy that's hollow. This is fullness. In the same way Jesus was made full of the Godhead bodily, the very next words is, and we have been made full in him. 
He was saying if people come to you with arguments and if they come to you with thoughts and oh man that's deep and oh the, man that's profound and let's just really get into that it's really stretching my mind and man I really have the truth he says truth is not a concept truth is a person <laughs> truth is Jesus Christ himself and when we begin to believe in him for life he begins to flow he that believes in me out of his innermost being will flow. Rivers of living water will flow out of us. If I know anybody that is growing in their faith in God, I'll tell you that the experience of the Holy Spirit is also enlarging in their lives. Now, if there's a believer that says they understand grace, but that isn't happening, it's because they don't understand their participation with the Holy, through the Holy, with the Holy Spirit through faith that will make them believing, praying, Bible studying, witnessing, testifying, miracle working, uh, alive believers, not because they are so uh, determined to be that way, but because that's who the Holy Spirit inside of us is. When we believe him, we release him. And when we release him, he displays himself as he is. The fruit of the Spirit takes over our character and our lifestyle, not because we are trying hard, but because we are believing in him, he's being released and the character of God is being displayed because it's Jesus through the Holy Spirit who's being displayed. The image of Christ is being seen in us. I want to be that last type of Christian. There are there are so many, they're just cool passages. I, I, don't, I don't know if I should go into them today or not. But let me just say this that there are those that are mixed up with Old Covenant, New Covenant, and you're not coming to terms with what Jesus has given you apart from you. And it's time to decide that everything I have from Jesus is a gift, everything. I have not earned it, and I don't have to earn it because I already have it. It came when Jesus came into my life. You don't have to think it. You don't have to feel it. You don't have to experience it. Begin to believe it, and you'll end up thinking it. You'll end up feeling it. You'll end up experiencing it. But don't start with that. That's over in the soul region. Start in the spirit. Begin to believe now. That's spiritual. That's based on the word. Begin to believe now, and it will work its way into the soul realm, and it'll work its own way into the body realm, and it'll work its way into your social realm, sphere and out into your world and you will be a minister for Christ me too that's for us all I want to be a believer there's a, a verse I just ran into last night yesterday it's it's just I love it I told Mona about it a little bit this morning but Isaiah 49 I believe uh, verse 11 and 12 and it says this that because of the blood of my covenant I will release you from the waterless pit. I will free you from the waterless pit. Have you ever been in the waterless pit and you're a Christian? You're down there and it's dry, 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 dry. You know what the flesh is? That's the waterless pit. Now God has brought us into the spirit through his son. That's where we live. But if your mind's over in the flesh, that's going to be your experience. You, you have the right to live life out of what the Spirit provides, or you have the life right to live your life, though God has freed you from the flesh, you have the right to set your mind there and live out of the flesh, and there is no water there in the flesh. The mind, will, emotions will not supply you with life. You gotta take the brain and get it over here in the Spirit. And when you're in the Spirit, living by the Spirit, focused on the Spirit, waking up in the morning, good morning, Holy Spirit, I trust you today. Going through your day and your mind and emotions are going up and down and you're going, Holy Spirit, I'm believing you right now. You go to bed at night, Holy Spirit, I trust you now, I believe you now. Then the Bible says, I will take you, if, 
It's by the blood of my covenant. Sometimes we're so focused on new covenant, old covenant. New covenant is different than the old covenant. I'll show you one difference. He said that I will take you out of the wild uh, uh, waterless pit because of, not my covenant, but because of the blood of my covenant. Because of the blood of my covenant. It's not the covenant. It's the fact that his son, who is God, see, if I create a bunch of stuff, what's more valuable, my existence or the existence of that stuff? I'm the creator. My existence is far more important. When Jesus gave his blood, it was his life that was being exchanged for our lives. And when his life was exchanged for our lives, there's no comparison to the value. He, he adequately, more than adequately, paid for our life by his life. That being the case, the blood of the covenant bought us freedom from the waterless pit. And God says, I will free you from the waterless pit. Now that we're freed out of the pit, the next sentence says, Therefore, return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. And I declare to you today that I will restore to you double. God has taken every believer and he has taken us out of the waterless pit. He has done that. But the next statement says, because I have freed you from the waterless pit and taken you out, now you return to the fortress, you prisoners of hope. And I will restore to you double. What happens is we get out of the waterless pit. We get out of the flesh into the spirit, which has happened for every believer, whether they know it or not. We're not in the flesh. There's not a, a, a believer on the face of the earth that is in the flesh, even if they worship funny. They're not in the flesh. Even if they are attention-getting people, they're not in the flesh. They are in the spirit. If you have Christ, Romans chapter 8, you are in the spirit and you're in the realm of the spirit. Now, focus your mind there and live according to that, Paul says. So, we have been lifted out of the waterless pit, out of the flesh, and we're now in the realm of the spirit. Since we are, like Paul said, let's don't waste it. Let's take advantage of this thing. Since we are in the realm of the spirit, then it says that now return to your fortress, you prisoners of hope. And I'm going to restore double to you. I have lived the experience for years in the waterless pit. Now God had taken me out, but I had, I, I could not, I didn't believe it. I didn't receive it. I didn't live according to what God had done. I didn't know. I hadn't been told. I was essentially told that I deserved the misery that I was in. And who knows if that misery would ever end. But I'm telling you now, whatever you've gone through to this moment as a believer, I'm not promoting sin. I'm not excusing sin. I'm not condoning sin. I'm telling you that God has answered sin. That God has freed us from sin. And you now are not in what looks to you to be a waterless pit. God has brought you out of the flesh and he has set you into the spirit, whether you see it, whether you feel it, whether you think it or not. Now that being the case, then return to the fortress. Isaiah 49 verse 12. Return to your fortress. All of that strength you once had, all that prosperity, all of that provision, all of the security, all the safety, all the strength you once knew in God. God says, now that you're freed from the flesh, why don't you enjoy the life of the Spirit that's yours? Why waste it? Today is the day that God hears you. Today is the day that God helps you. That is life in grace. God says, that there now there are opportunities beyond what you can believe. Now that all of the assets and all of the benefits of God are yours and they're mine. And I'll restore double to you. I promise you, I promise you, I promise you. Whatever you've done in the past, now listen to me, please. 
God cares about the damage it's done to you and the damage it's done to people. But as far as your place in God, those things that are behind you, God does not care. God does not care. The whole idea of the blood that takes away sin, the whole idea of forgiveness is the concept, the reality beyond concept that God has removed away from us everything that might in any way interfere with our relationship with him. We have been brought near by the blood of Jesus. We have been brought close by the blood of Jesus. You don't have to pray your way into the Holy of Holies today. You live there. And excuse me for saying it like this, and when you sin, you've just sinned there. But the gift of Jesus has bought you that closeness, that oneness, that unity with Jesus that nobody can take away from you. Well, why do we sin then? Why do we do sinful things? It's, we do them not because we are enslaved to sin anymore, but when we do sin, it's because our focus has been on our flesh and not over with the spirit. And so we can be overtaken in the stuff of the flesh because we have set our mind on the flesh, even though we be free people. We're not slaves, slaves of the flesh, but if you want to take your mind and preoccupy it with the flesh sooner or later, you're going to live with all of the experience of the flesh over there, dominating your life. Well, then I'm a slave of the flesh. No, not as long as God says now, but when you turn your mind over to the spirit, you will overcome all of the things in the flesh. Maybe you have moved out of the spirit. Maybe you've known how beautiful that land is over with the Spirit, and maybe you have turned over to the flesh. And maybe you've experienced experiences that are, are, are deadly, hurtful, ugly, over in the flesh realm. The good news is this, that if you should decide to believe that God has not moved away from you, that he has not allowed your sin to separate you from him, that everything that was once yours years ago is still yours today, will be yours tomorrow, will be yours five years from now. If you'll decide that what God said is true and believe it above your experience and realize that you have the opportunity to now, no matter who you are, no matter how you've given your mind to the flesh, you are ready to give your mind back to the Spirit of God and believe in Him, you do that, and I promise you, he will rise in you like a river. <laughs> he will do that. And everything that was once taken away from you because you were over in the flesh in your thinking will be restored to you and double, says the Lord. And you will come back into your fortress and you'll live a life of strength, prosperity, and you'll have when he says twice as much, he's not being mathematical. He's just saying a whole lot more. You'll have a whole lot more than you ever, ever had. All because of what Jesus did. All because of the blood. All because of the blood. All because of the blood. You want to be the hardest working Christian that ever lived? Don't go over with your willpower there and try to make that happen. Believe in the Holy Spirit, and I promise you, you'll outwork anything anybody out of willpower work could ever do by believing in God. Because when you believe in the Holy Spirit, it's him doing the work, and I'll tell you, he will outwork you <laughs> through you. You'll go, who in the world's doing this? God say, well, it's actually me, but everybody thinks it's you. So God bless you all. I just pray right now that you don't get too disturbed by all the news going on here. The church is not shutting down. It will not be overcome. Uh, God will give you wisdom.
for this little season and we'll get out the other side looking pretty good. I promise it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.